coming out here to listen to me talk. Uh, he asked me to put on my strategist hat and uh, talk about the whole subject of Israeli nuclear weapons more from the point of view of military strategy or international relations theory, uh, and not so much in terms of the Israel lobby, uh, which I, of course, have written about with Steve Walt. Uh, what I want to do is ask four questions and then answer them. First is, why did Israel develop nuclear weapons to begin with in the 1950s and 1960s? Second, does it make sense today for Israel to have a nuclear deterrent? Third, does opacity make good strategic sense for Israel? Uh, does it matter for the United States? And then fourth, uh, is it in America's interest for Israel to have nuclear weapons? Those are the four questions I want to answer. Uh, you want to remember when I answer those first two questions about why Israel developed nuclear weapons, I'm going to approach it from Israel's point of view. This will become clearer as I go along, but Israel and the United States are separate countries, and sometimes what's good for Israel is not good for the United States. On the question of Israel and nuclear weapons, let me start with a general point. The reason that states want nuclear weapons, in almost all cases, is because they are the ultimate deterrent. <laughs> Uh, they make it almost impossible for an adversary or an opponent uh, to attack your homeland and threaten the survival of your state. For the obvious reason that if you have nuclear weapons and your survival is at risk, <laughs> that's one clear circumstance under which you're likely to use those nuclear weapons. Uh, Many people now argue, here in Washington especially, that nuclear weapons have offensive capability. <coughs> if Iran were to get nuclear weapons, it could use those weapons to dominate the Gulf and establish hegemony in the region. This is not a serious argument. Uh, and of course, there are not many serious arguments that take place about Iran here inside the Beltway as you well know, but the idea that they're going to use nuclear weapons to dominate uh, the Gulf is it's a lab uh, It's also important to understand that even if you have nuclear weapons, it doesn't mean that other countries won't attack you. Uh, again, I'm arguing that if you have nuclear weapons, they won't attack your homeland and threaten your survival. But you want to remember that in 1973, even though Israel had nuclear weapons, <coughs> The Syrians and the Egyptians understood that Israel had nuclear weapons. Uh, those two Arab states did initiate the famous October War or Yom Kippur War. So nuclear deterrence has its limits. Now, I think a powerful case can be made that it made good strategic sense for Israel to acquire nuclear weapons in the 1950s and the 1960s. One because of the strategic environment that they operated in, and two, for historical reasons. With regard to the strategic environment, uh, at that point in time, again, we're talking about the 50s and the early 60s when this program was set in motion, uh, Israel's conventional forces relative to its neighbors was nowhere, they were nowhere near as powerful as they now are. The gap between Israeli conventional forces and the neighbors' conventional forces was significant then, but nowhere near as great as it is today. At the same time, both Egypt and Syria, for much of that period, had very close relations with the Soviet Union, which was supplying them with arms. And as most of you know, the special relationship between the United States and Israel did not get going until 1967, and I would argue it was really not until after the 1973 war that the special relationship really began to take off. So relations between the United States and Israel were not very close at the time. The Soviet Union was a key player in the region, and Egypt and Syria, who were seen as client states of the Soviet Union, were quite formidable adversaries. I don't want to overstate the case. 
nevertheless, given that strategic environment, and given the history of the Jews, especially in Europe, and especially given the fact that the Holocaust was recent history at the time, you can understand full well why the Israelis wanted to acquire a nuclear weapon. And I've been a national security advisor to David Ben-Gurion. Uh, I would have pushed him down the nuclear road back in the 50s and the 60s. The question, though, and Sasha raised this, is whether it makes sense today for Israel to have a nuclear deterrent. I think it's obvious that if Iran were to acquire nuclear weapons, it would make little sense for Israel to give up its nuclear deterrent. In fact, you'd never get the Israelis to do that. That's not the interesting question. The interesting question is, what should Israel do if Iran abandons its nuclear enrichment capability and agrees to a comprehensive inspections regime? Would it then make sense for Israel to give up its nuclear arsenal? I think the answer to that question is not open and shut. But I think, on balance, a powerful case could be made, or can be made, that Israel would be better off abandoning its nuclear deterrent. Now, why do I say that? Well, the argument for not giving it up is that they now have the ultimate deterrent. As you know, all states in the international system worry somewhat about their survival. The Israelis worry about their survival probably more than any other state in the system for good reasons and bad reasons. But nevertheless, they worry. And given that they worry and that they have the ultimate deterrent, a powerful case can be made they should give it up or not give it up. But I think there are more powerful arguments on the other side. First of all, there's a fundamentally different uh, strategic environment in place today that existed in the 50s and in the 60s. And it's much more favorable from Israel's point of view. The Soviet Union, as we all know, has gone away. Uh, and it is not supplying either Egypt or Syria or anybody in the neighborhood with uh, a meaningful conventional uh, fighting force. Uh, furthermore, Egypt uh, has changed uh, its approach to dealing with Israel and is now effectively uh, a relatively friendly state. Uh, it's not an adversary of Israel like it was in the late 1950s and throughout uh, the 1960s as well. And if you look at what's happened with regard to the special relationship, it's blossomed since 1973. And the United States and Israel today are basically joined at the hip. Uh, that wasn't the case back then. And related to that, the United States has supplied Israel with the most up-to-date conventional weaponry in its arsenal. And as a result of that fact, combined with the fact that the Soviets are no longer supplying the Egyptians and the Syrians, the gap between the Israelis on one hand and the Arab states on the other in terms of conventional weaponry